with this very optimistic opening, let's start the stream. It is optimistic. This is this will be fine. Happy Wednesday. This is this is be totally fine. Continue old game. We are Twitch through I really got it. I wish I could change that name. Probably can't. Anyway, this is my third game here on Twitch that we've done. First one was what? Airmore, which went which we had to end because I was doing it all wrong. And then the second game was with the Mind Flayer factions, right, left. And we lost that one. We just got crushed, uh, Dominion-wise. And this one, it's doing okay. Okay, Vogos. So, stuff. We are in spring in the year five, so not terribly far in. Uh, stuff, stuff, stuff. Let's just go through this because I'm not sure exactly... No, we didn't play last week because of the hashtag turn based Thursday thing. And um, so now we have to catch up on where we're going. So we're working on evocation. Looks like three. So we'll have that done in two turns. And we'll go, we're get, going all the way to evocation for reasons. And we'll go to construction. That's for magic items. And go from there. Blah, blah, blah. Has searched the tower or searched this region for magic sites. There are none here. There's a battle in the White Forest. This is this does involve us. We lost another doggy, but we won the fight. Uh, let's watch the fight. So, for those of you who aren't familiar with this game, it's basically a turn-based strategy game, 4x type. But once you get to the combat, it's all automated. It's kind of well it's scripted is a better word, and um, basically you just tell your troops rough orders on what to do, including your leadership. Leadership uh, units have a little bit more control. But your your typical un army units, you just tell them, you know, start over on this side and go charge in, go kill something, that kind of stuff. That guy didn't make it. And no, your your vision isn't going. The units are supposed to look like that. Friendly fire is a thing. And I guess we should turn this on before we forget. See what happened there. See, look. <laughs> Got hit by poisoned arrows. So, four bog druids. That's. Patrona of the Healing Suite. That's Veronica. Great. This is one of our leader sorceresses. We have two of those. So, just regular druids. Okay. So, we're good. So, apparently, we're... are these real battles? I'm, I don't, I'm not sure if this is related to a war or not. Mighty Pillars. So, Independence. Lost a couple of imps. Oh, this is um, the Spiridor's armor? Army, I think. Yes, the imps. We have a spot in one of our provinces that allows us to summon imps into our army. And that's led by Mr. Despirador, the Sleeper. He is, uh, what is he? He's a fire mage. He's just a regular... Oh, we gave... No, wait a minute. How did he get undead leadership? It's inspirational, recuperation, fire shield. I forget how he got uh, the undead leadership thing. Because he doesn't have the magic to do it. Oh! Oh! The sleeper. He is a. He was a, um, a hero a long, a long, long, a hero long ago, and we raised him up out of the ground to lead our troops. That's that's who it is. We use the spell to bring him back to life. So that's the sleeper part. So he's technically. He's not undead, but he kind of is. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. They're ancient heroes of exceptional size and prowess, armed with uh, weapons forged at the dawn of time. They wait for the final cataclysmic battle that will decide the fate of the world. They can only be awakened by powerful magic. The sleepers are exceptionally good generals, and soldiers under their command will rarely uh, rout from battle. So that's where he's getting the undead leadership. And then I think we made it so that he could use fire magic so that he can control the imps, because the imps are technically undead units. And he's our only general that can control or command undead units. I've lost some. This guy's charged in. Oh, 
exactly what. I'm trying to see what what he was doing. But anyway, so we lost two amps. No big deal. So we got that. Fortress of that is completed. Construction of fortress and there is completed as well. Battle fiction occurred. So what that means, so this is our capital. This is where all the research is happening and magic items being created. Currently we're all doing research for the most part. No, Fanny is defending. Fanny, what did you make? Boots of silent stuff, and we have a nope, no shit, we don't want that. Get that back. So Fanny is one of our magic item people because he's got uh, water magic, earth magic, nature magic, and glamour magic. So he's got a pretty wide selection of stuff to make. Although to make the really good stuff, he's going to need more ranks, but we'll worry about that later. So where's our glorious leader? Glorious leader, Veronica. She's up here. There she is. Okay. So the white forest. So we're the green. These are not our friends. And so Veronica, our fearless, fearless leader. The matron, uh, matrona of the healing spirit spring is a giant of divine heritage place to guard a spring by previous uh, superior god. For some reason, uh, the spring was special to the whoever, and he installed his power in the sparkling waters. He told the Matrona never to bathe in the sacred waters and to keep them ever clean. But the Matrona, Matrona of the spring couldn't resist and bathe in the blessed waters anyway. And the powers instilled in the spring were suffused in her body. And mankind came to her and begged her to heal them for, from all ills. And they gave her their prayers. But one day... Uh, so-and-so returned uh, to take his uh, centennial bath and discovered that the reinvigorating powers of the spring was lost and its waters be found by the filth of men. Furious, uh, he threw the Matrona into the spring and placed a cliff on top of it, imprisoning her for eternity. But now, with uh, what's-his-face gone, a trickle of water is eroding the stone, so the Matrona of the Healing Spring will once more bring mercy and wisdom to mankind. She is the vessel of might, mistress of deception, goddess of plants and trees, and is a pretender goddess trying to banish all the pretenders and become the true god. So, she's a titan, basically. So, it's a little bit bigger than normal. Got some good leadership there. She's got some magic leadership. Can't lead the undead. Doesn't have the stuff to do it. She's got two, uh, two levels of water ma magic, five of nature, six of glamour. There's a research ability. She, of course, blessed. Uh, she's got awe, poison resistant. She's pretender to God. Start site, basically, we get a better sp starting spot. Or, yeah, we'll see that in a second. She's stealthy because of uh, the faction we are. She's also lucky. I think that's because of an item she's wearing. Yeah, she got the pendant of luck. Uh, she's blurred. I think that's part of the faction thing, unless it's an item. Could be. We'll see. Uh, for survival, so we don't need any supplies in the forest. Supply bonus, so she provides more supplies to her, her armies. She's true sight, so illusions don't fool her. And then we're in reinvigoration, so she generates that's from her shoes. Helps her do more stuff in combat. She's a healer. This is the important one. This is why we actually took her. Because in her previous run... We seem to have a problem with diseases and wounds and all this other fun stuff, and there was no real way to heal them efficiently. So, let's look for a goddess or a god that does healing, and there she is. <laughs> so, basically what she does is every turn she heals the wounds of somebody that's in within the area with her. So, that's a every turn thing, so it's very, it's very useful. And disease resistant, and then their experience. So that. And as far as items go, no weapons yet. She's got the Gossamer Veil, which gives her increases her glamour magic by one. She also get that's where the blur is coming from, and also more stealthy. Then the Gossamer Gown. More hit points. The awe, which makes it harder for people to hit her. And the boots. So revigoration, so in combat you use up your vigor. By doing stuff, fighting, casting spells, whatever. These shoes help her get reinvigorated. Another stealth boost and the four survival. And then the dream spool. So this gives us a temporary glamour gem. 
So every time they, we go into combat, she gets one gem to work with, which allows her to cast more more powerful spells in combat. And she also gets a retinue of two warrior illusions to help defend her if anybody comes after her. And, of course, the little pendant of luck. Because, you know, who doesn't want to be lucky? What does luck actually do? I predict by fate. Uh, so while lucky, there's a 75% chance of not being harmed by an attack that would otherwise have been fatal. The lucky one is protected from magical as well as normal attacks, but not from attacks that cause instant death. Lucky does not provide any benefits for undead or inanimate beings, which she is neither. So that's our glorious leader. Oh, and she also has her own little pack of dogs that joins her in combat every turn. Or every time we go into combat, there's like three or four of them. Um, they just go out and chew on stuff. And then we have Vukrul's, uh The maybe dying are profit. Uh, he's riding around on a, how a horse. He's got nature magic, glamour magic. He's a priest as well. Does some research if necessary. He's also blessed. Oh, that's a profit thing. He is, has glamour. And the glamour stuff is related to our higher end uh, faction based units. Uh, he's got a thorn spear for poking people and poisoning them. That's what that does. It's got a strong poison on it. It's got the eye shield. Anybody who tries to... that Anybody that hits the shield. Anyone who hits the eye shield will be punished by the vengeful spirit locked inside the eye of the shield. The spirit will strike at the eyes of the perpetrator. So, blind him. Welcome back, Vukruls. Is it good tea or is it bad tea? Still needs a helmet. And chain mail of displacement. So basically this makes it uh, harder to be hit. Extra hit points and protection of the body and stuff. Not too bad. And then bracers of protection. So, so extra protection. So what's his extra protection level? 20. That's pretty good. Right around a horse. He basically just stands behind the troops and tells them what to do and cast spells. Can only be the great T. Sure. So that's our that's our this is our main army. We're basically trying to take these territories so this guy these guys won't try to take him. Um Pretenders of the World. So we have five enemies. We're currently at war with these guys, who is Ur. It's probably a bad idea, but what are you going to do? Er, er is the little brown with the blue outline, which is, oh, look, it's these guys. These guys. So this is probably a bad idea to have done what we did, but we'll see how it goes, I guess. Score graphs. So Er, that's Er. So Er, provinces, we're down here. We're the green line. Er is that little brown line. He, I'm guessing this is because we took some up. I thought we only took one province. Hmm. Let's burn the Ur and salt the land. No, we don't salt the land. We're the good guys. Forts. We have one more fort than him, it looks like. Income. I'm not worried about that too much. It's more about army size. We have a bigger army than he does, so that's good. Let's continue on that point. Okay, so here... We have to search this place to see if there's anything good here. Let's see. This this is one of our druids who is currently somewhat redundant. So can't build a temple? Oh. I thought druids could build temples. Okay. Uh, then your job is to Control and squish all the, get rid of this unrest on the right hand side. It's your job. Everybody else. Let's see. Doesn't matter which one of these sorceresses does the job that we're going to have to do, which is. Build a temple. Temples are how we get our dominion out there. Then all these guys are going to search for magic sites, see what kind of stuff we have here. Oh, we already have assault spray cliffs. 
which is generating one air gem and one water gem per turn for us. Now the Spirit is moving. I think he's going back to collect more imps. These two are sitting here to do research. We have a fortification here. I guess we can look. So this screen shows us uh, what units are currently in the province and what they're doing. So leaders on the left, their little in, in individual units for their armies are here. Ah, oh, the druids. Yeah, he has room for 15. Oh, he does have 15. You only have 10. Okay. So this particular spot. Oh, we can recruit all kinds of stuff here. Question is, what do we want here? Do we want something there? We got to take this province. Oh, this is our assassin scout. Assassin slash scout. She goes around and kills stuff. You should go up there. We want you to go here. Go see if we can kill something here. It's only five enemy units and keto soldiers. This might be a bad idea, but we'll see. She is uh, somewhat outfitted. She's got a serpent chris, which is a dagger, and it does poison damage. Death poison, so it's pretty effective. You can see 35 points worth of death poison. So you stab somebody with that, and they usually die. And then she's got the blade of grass in the offhand. So she, yes, she is dual wielding. This one causes uh, people to bleed. So not a lot of damage, but the bleeding thing helps. And we're an ivy crown, which gives her... Uh, if she used a spell, Awaken Vine Men, they would get one extra one. However... She doesn't actually summon them. She has an item to summon them, but it doesn't. That crown doesn't work on them. And she's using this lion pelt, which makes her basically uh, where is it? Invulnerability eighteen, so she's highly highly resistant to taking damage. She also has extra hit points, and of course the ranger boots. So reinvigoration, stealth, and for survival. She's not leading an army. It's no big deal. Pendant of Luck, so she's lucky. And then this one, Handful of Acorns. These acorns summon three vine men every combat. And again, the crown does not affect this, unfortunately. So we need to get her a different hat. But she's good at her job. I think she's got four or five assassinations under her belt now. So that's her. Now this is our Lizardmen area. Now that we're at war, we should probably, if, do we have fortification? We don't have fortification here. Fortifications are expensive. But we have fortification here and here, so, but not there. What we do here? So we're okay or not, I think. Okay, and then these guys, the little yellowish brown banner. We're not at war with them. They are Machanka, basically an African type faction. Ur is, um, what is Ur? I don't remember what Ur is specifically. And this place is fortified, laboratory, same deal. Fortification. We got all kinds of fortifications back here. Birdsong Tower. What do you do? Reveals mundane score graphs. <laughs> Boost glamour ritual range by two provinces. Oh, here's our Amazon province. We get uh, Pegasus Riders here, along with uh, Amazons. Amazons are... They have short bows, daggers, a little bit of armor. They're not spectacular, but they're there. We're mainly... Work in this province for the Pegasus Riders. Because they get a lance, short bow, armor, buckler, hat. 
And of course, Pegasus itself does stuff. Oh yeah, and they're sacred units, so they get bonuses within our dominion. Bab Ur is Babylonian? Oh, yes, they are. Yes, thank you for the reminder. That's why they have the Enkidos. Very early Near East. I don't know what they're exactly supposed to... All I know is... I know it's it's Babylonian, or actually technically Sumerian. <laughs> if you want to go past it before Babylon, um, earlier then. That's what these guys are. Their main units are Enkidu. If if you don't know what an Enkidu do, Enkidu was the the best friend of Gilgamesh, who was the first epic hero in in history. So at least in Western civilization. Enkidu was his best friend. That's how you know these guys are based on Babylonian slash Sumerian. Sorry, Shumerian, if you're doing, pronouncing it correctly. It's one of my history teachers said. It's not Sumerian, it's Shumerian. Okay. There. How is it Shumerian when there wasn't an H in there? Because that's how it was pronounced. And welcome back, Canavate. Is that what some ancient rule the H is invisible? No, it's just how the language has worked. Just like for for example is <laughs> for whatever reason Su Sumerian or uh, Sumeria, for whatever reason, didn't have an H in there when it was originally recorded by Westerners and or by, you know, modern people. And But once they started digging into the documentation and stuff and rebuilding languages, they figured they've they realized that that's actually pronounced with an H. Translating foreign languages. That, it's not so much foreign languages, but it's ancient, really dead languages. That's fun to translate. It's it there's it's a whole art form in itself. And like I said, it's a it's just the way it is. Dun dun dun. Track I mean, original Slavic languages into the Latin alba alphabet. Yeah. When was this game released? Earlier this year? This is Dominion Six. It's not about the graphics, it's about the gameplay. The, the Dominion si series has been around for, what, since the mid-2000s? Nearly 20 years now, I think. Now you distracted me. So these are just regular Amazons. Oh, I guess I should uh, show how the scripting works. So, as we saw in the first battle, or the first battle, there is no actual combat controlling the armies. You just basically arrange their list, their starting locations for whatever you know, whatever they happen to be. You put like cavalry over on the wings, or you know, whatever, and you put your you know bulk of your army in the middle. Put your leadership tent usually behind, depending on what they are and what they're capable of. And you can affect formations depending on how smart the troops are. So we've got the double line, sparse line, line formation, box, and stuff. And the formations affect the morale. So you got that. So anyway, that's your starting locations. And then, once that's done, you can give basic orders to your, your troops. In this case, uh, these are range units, so they fire and they keep their distance. So they basically stand back and throw stuff or shoot stuff and try to stay away from the enemy as much as possible. And you can give them targets to closest enemy, enemy archers, uh, rearmost enemies. Usually, you know, the leadership stays in the back, but anyway, large enemy monsters. So there's your choices for the troops. And again, not all troops you can select. Some troops are kind of stupid, like undead, and they just do what they want. 
you can you can basically tell them where to, to start and that's what they do leadership's a little bit more complicated with the the leadership you can start them with five custom orders uh, like cast a specific spell hold a turn attack for one turn fly if they can fly that kind of thing and then once they're done that you give them the same orders as your troops so in this case cast spells no specific no just casting spells because you don't actually specifically can't uh, target anybody with that that's what these the orders are for kind of you can advance and cast spells basically yes take a step forward cast a spell one turn next turn do the same thing that kind of stuff nicely sticking with the original graphics are they? I don't think so. They might be. I honest the bat the graphics really don't bother me. They really don't. I I like this game. It's it's kind of like a throwback to like the eighties and nineties. You know when there was more thought put into game designing a game than it was so much. It wasn't about so much the graphics and everything. It was more about you know because there is no real graphics. You have to have actually good gameplay. Unlike today's games. We seem to be more, a lot of them are more focused on the actual graphics and sounds and special effects. Gameplay, eh, screw that. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> yeah, graphics are still being invented. Now, would this be a better game if it had good graphics? Not necessarily. I mean, I guess it depends. And keep in mind, this is a two man team making this game. I think two brothers, if I remember correctly, or two friends. Um, I think they're in Sweden. I think they're Swedish, but um, this is a two-man team making this game. So, and the thing is, it's you know go oh these graphics are really simple blah 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 why can't they spend more time in that? Well, it's because when you actually start looking at the the factions and all the different units that are in it and all the backstory behind everything, uh, you know, for two guys, it's a lot of work because it's like da, 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 what is it? It's like all these units, so they got. They put in all that they have all these all these units have like a backstory to them, right? So this is just for you know the scout, and then these guys, the champion, they get another story too, and then the slingers, they get stuff too, and these guys get the stuff. So they went in and came up with all this stuff, and this is just one faction. There's like ten million factions. How many? There's like twenty, maybe more. And then the the way the game actually works too is when you choose to start a game, you get to choose the age of the game. It's early, middle, and late. And the factions change through time. <laughs> so like um the undead unit or the undead faction, when it's the late era, I think it's I think it's the the middle and the late era for that faction, it's all undead. But when it's early age, actually humans still. I know you're joking about the graphics. Were you though? <laughs> Will you? Th were you though? <laughs> See, this is the fun part about text. You know, it's hard to ch it's hard to tell. But anyway, like I said, they they put they put a lot of work into this. the The story behind all, all the units and all the different factions. It, it's and then of course they change over time too. Well, I see, see, I don't know what that face... What does that face actually mean? It means... Ca oh, the Kappa face. Yeah, I... See, I didn't see a smiley face, so I didn't realize it was being serious or not. I've never... I can, At the Kappa face, I've never really decided whether that's a... Is that supposed to be a funny face, or is that just... You're just being weird. I don't understand that emote. Lifted about all it's all about the graphics now today's many times. I are old. Welcome to the club. Can't use magic to know the emotional element of each comment. No. It's a smirky thing, not to be taken seriously. And Vuclus is a secret secret Floridian. Yeah, Cannon's actually older than me. I'm only 53. I'll be 54 later this year. Cannon's actually older than me. So ha, take that, Vukros. 
kids today, I was playing growing up, that would be Vuk Rules. Vuk Rules is a youngster. I don't think he's even old enough to drive yet. Okay, so what was I doing? Now I'm all distracted. Um, we still have to take all these provinces back here. What I really, I need a decent second army. Those are extras. You know, people 40 plus that don't have a license? Well, depends on where you live, I think. I have a license, but I really don't drive anymore. <laughs> okay. Um, so now we're officially at war with Ur. So now we have to start pushing back. This is why we need a second army. I think that's supposed to be Disparador's job. So he's going back there. Oh, these are the our second best infantry units. They get the they get the glamour, so they they're blurry on the screen. It's recruiting them. Those I probably need more druids. Two more. And then start slingers, slingers everywhere. We're just waiting to go gray here. So that we'll be able to crank all that stuff out this turn. You're only just reaching the hay. Is that the crest of a hill ahead part of life? Soon it'll be, wow, that looks rather steep on the downslope. I'm pretty sure you're over considered over the hill at 40 these days, isn't it? <laughs> 55 and it's slippery. Oh, I definitely hit that at 40. Hey, Yolos, welcome back. License is merely a formality. Just run over the first pedestrian you see to assert dominance. There we go. You didn't plan on living past 40 ish fact. I didn't either. In all honesty, I didn't think I was going to make it past 40. Fanny. So Fanny can make magic items. What should man? Look at all the choices. Unseen sword. Oh, our assassin needs a hat. Mistletoe garland. Can't afford. Try and click that one. Oh, the Gossamer Veil. This is the... Oh, more Glamour Magic. And Blur. Maybe. Poison Resistance and Luck. Let's do... Does she have Blur already? That's Glamour. Blur. Glamour and Blur would be good, right? Oops. Forge. Oh, too low. Oh, damn it. So what do you need? Glamour Magic 3. Oof. You have to know. It was indifferent until it started to hint at secret. Secret what? <clears throat> Who cools in five years? There'll be a five in front of your age. You. Yeah. 
He told you he was a youngster. He said, do not ask about, so of course, oh, did he say do not ask? Oh, just don't ask about how large the plus is. Oh, oh yeah, that's, that's, when people say that, they're actually asking you to ask. Fanny. Can we empower Fanny to be better at her job? Or his job? 30 glamour gems. We have 48. So. Oh, we can give him death magic. Uh, we don't have the death magic gems, though, do we? It's the purple ones that are death magic. We're a long way from that one. So. More glamour for Fanning. It's gems equal magic. How does one acquire those gems? Typically, you run into these, see the over on the right-hand side, these provinces have sometimes locations that you find, or buildings, um, that you find in these uh, provinces. You have to search for them with your magic users. And if they if they have enough magic in a particular area, they will locate the appropriate building. So in this case, the Veiled Valley produces one Glamour Gem per turn. And Starlit Pond is one Astral Pearl per turn. So that's how that generally works. Meryl Vash, welcome to the stream. We need an experienced hero, so I propose to name somebody after Cannon. Well, it's up to Cannon now. Well, Cannon, you've been volunteered to have somebody named after you. You're okay with that? <laughs> so, anyway, so gems, like I said, they're they're basically produced in the provinces, and you find the gems by searching with your magic users. But you, sometimes you will get gems randomly through events that happen per, from turn to turn. Um, but it's usually not a big amount. And then the gems can be used for different things. Basically make magic items, empower your wizard or your magic users to you know increase in power with certain types of magic, depending on how many gems you have to, to work with. To crap it over experience. It's okay. Hey, Scabbard, welcome back. Um, you guys keep distracting me. So we're empowering, patrolling, researching, researching, researching. We're building up an army here. Slowly but surely. And this will be led by the spirit order for the time being. Let's see. So this place, what can we recruit here? Pretty good selection of our troops. It's defensible. Oh, we're going to do some more of these too. Pegasus Riders. Some Amazons on top of that. I think the Slingers are cheaper, aren't they? Just a little bit. Not by much. Why aren't they cheaper? By more. Because they have a dagger, a short bow, armor, and a hat. Slingers. They just have the armor, no hat. They have a dagger and a sling. Range of 30, as opposed to 35 for the bows. Yeah, sure. Dun, dun, dun. Do 
Did you ever see an eight inch floppy disk? I've seen one in your father's job. I've seen one. I've seen eight inch floppies before. Those things are huge. I still have my original hard drive that I got for my Apple IIGS with a whopping 30 megabytes of space. How big is that thing? It's a good 12 inch by 12 inches, I think. About three or four inches high. <laughs> 30 megabytes of space. It takes up more space than probably two or three laptops these days. <laughs> The iOmega zip drives, we use those at, at work. We use those for backing up our, our data and stuff. The, the zip drives were awesome. Yep, 100 megabytes. That's why we had two of them. We had two, two drives and about a dozen disks that we used to uh, store our data. Okay, that's it for our turn, I think. Oh, you haven't moved. You are defending. What are you doing here? What are you? Oh, a merman cat. Oh, that's right. This guy's supposed to be recruiting troops to go take over the water, I think. He has his little mermaids. The merman, so... Attack. Don't uh, closest enemies. We don't get to tell them what to do, though. Or as far as why can't we give them uh, structure? This poor amphibians. Why don't they get a, a formation? Glorious leader. Maybe he's a, the problem. Stay behind the troops. So is he even good at leading people? He can lead up to 50 troops. He's got a coral spear and a coral cap, so mer mermans. They're amphibious. They can go into the water and land, so. Skybird, your first hard drive is a 94, and it was 60 megabytes for your Omega. Wow. Any six had this new internal hard disk drive. We were only allowed to use half of the space, like anyone could ever use 10 megabytes of space, I know. Turbo mode, press that button. <laughs> ah. Falcon 1 and its huge megabytes of, megabyte worth of uh, information. Okay, so. So he's nothing special. But he doesn't need to breathe. So we've got 20 enemy units there. So that should get us enough to uh, go take that lake. One point six gigabytes. Four years, so ninety-eight. One point six gigabytes. The nineties are a blur to me as far as jumping from hard drive to hard drive. Okay, so recruiting. Now we can end our turn. Can we? Oh, you're defending still. You should uh, extract the building. No. And you're good. Oh, you screwed you up. So you're Come supposed on, to be researching. Come on, you pansy. Get back in there and fight. Garban. Look, cavalry, light cavalry with their spears and javelins. No 
We'll put the research in. What are you defend? What are you doing here? Oh, what are these guys? Ogres. Where do you get ogres from? Ogres are large. Oh, I think we summoned these. Stupid humanoids that inhabit the mountain regions. Yeah, we're leaving. Oh, that's right. We're leaving it on cares. Just for fun. So researching. You don't trust these guys. We're all old enough to have been bit to be when bitcoins were used to purchase pizza. If only had the foresight. <laughs> <laughs> to mine, but was worried about the electrical expense. Yeah. Bitcoins. He's defending. So he's the last one. So. In turn, there we go. We're good. So that took way longer than it should have because of uh, chance being really active, which is good. I don't mind. It's just distracting for me. Benny has, uh, Fanny the Fay has successfully empowered himself in glamour. So Fanny now has two glamour levels. No, yeah, two glamour levels. See what you can make now. Not what we need because you need to be three here. Can we empower Fanny again? I don't think we have enough gems to empower him again to another glamour level. We need 45. We have 24. Now I can do nature. We're making Fenny the strongest mage ever. I'm gonna rival Veronica. Bot is dead? Why is the bot dead? The bot crashed at some point after the stream started for some reason. Let me restart it. Restarting the bot. I wonder why you're so quiet. Bots back. Okay, so we're good there. So Fenny is glamour. Boss found a magic site here. So we searched this area. We found the South Spike script close already here. Forest of the Truffles. So this produces one nature and one earth gem per turn for us. So that works. We have a... Let's see. What's up here? Oh, barbarians. We don't care about them. Just wipe these guys out. How many troops? They have 80 units. Consists mainly of ghosts, Inquito soldiers, spear guards. The army appears to be common, commanded by Saladar, the spectral mage. There is a walled city located here. The walled city must be sieged and conquered if we are to take full control of this province. Crappy human units. No oh, slingers. We have more than 80 troops, though. By a few. Oh, the forest strolls. Forgot about the forest strolls. Hey, Paul knows what. Are we here to distract Gimpy? As well, he's just spouting facts there. Who rules? Okay. 
Okay, so should we go besiege here or desert of vision owned by Ur? If we conquer this, we'll get a fortress out of right away, right? So go get them. Actually, no. Let's see what the rest of the things going on here. They didn't find any stuff. An unexpected event has occurred in Annika. A few magic gems were found, as in one nature magic gem. Battle afflictions were cured by Veronica. Patrolling troops in White Forest have killed filthy brigands. Okay, you guys, go that way. That way. Okay, so our assassin. Let's see what she can kill. Assassinate enemy commander. Oh, yes, we can hire mercenaries. The Wind Lord. I don't think so. Um. Regular command? No, we don't want regular commanders. We like uh, cool commanders. Champion? Seventy-five for one of these guys. Two twenty-five for one of these guys. They're a spellcaster. They're glamour. They're just not quite as good as these guys. He's a priest. He's sacred. Was this one sacred? That one's sacred too. Oh, he's a priest. It's not a good one. Um. Mm. Go on to you. See how that goes. So research and researching. Spared our still moving that way. We have all kinds of extra troops up here waiting for him for the most part. Oh, we have this guy to lead stuff too. Oh, maybe we don't have to recruit that other one. But we should. So that way he can stay there. We'll have this guy join uh, the Spirador. Slingers. Do you make magic? It does. We need, uh, where's the poison arrow stuff? And venom arrows, that's what we really need. Some blessings, some courage, personal bark's gonna protect himself, and the arrows. Actually, let's swap that. Personal bark skin. These are slingers, so these guys are slingers too. Hello, Gimpy. It is time to take a break. Go get some more water while you are up. Not yet. Your next break is in one hour. Okay, so you guys uh, do double line. Your job is to hold an attack. These guys have javelins, so 
They just stand back and throw their javelins until they're they're out and then they'll engage. These guys just shoot, shoot, shoot. Can be. Listen to the computer. The computer is your friend. Anyone get that reference? Yes. Don't ask me where it comes from, but I know the reference. I I well, I know the line. Paranoia, there we go. Those guys and do these warriors because the blurred stuff. These guys. Ah, we'll do the rest of this when I get back. There's too much to do. So, oh, memory memory leaks are still very much a real thing. So. Anyway. I need to get up, stretch my legs, get some water, that kind of thing. Go talk to Mrs. Gimpy and Rocket, see what they're up to. Oh, never mind. They just left for their walk <laughs> as I looked down the can. <laughs> so, anyway, still need to get up, get some water. I'll be back in a few minutes. Thank you very much for watching. Enjoy the dog video.